Hey guys, I'm Jerry. I'm Sierra. We're ladies. And we tangent. One time. <laughs> One time. Yes, club. <laughs> Get down tonight. Wow. <laughs> that was incredible. <laughs> What's, What's up, everyone? Hello. Um, I'm riding a little bit of a high right now. Me too, me too, me too. Yeah. We just got off our very first live. Sure, click, clack, make your exit. <laughs> um, we just got off our very first live with our Patreon. It was so exciting. It seriously was like the funnest little group chat yeah that i've been a part of and we're not oh good God. at like doing short lives so <laughs> we were we're like 20 to 30 minutes max an hour later <laughs> yeah um so apologies to anyone who missed it mm -hmm. um questions are is it going to be watchable later like was it recorded i don't know we don't know yet um <laughs> also in the future we will probably be doing youtube live because there's no time limit on it. And there was a time oh, limit on this one. I did not know that. But because okay. I didn't sign up in time. Yeah. There was like a 24-hour grace period. Mm. We are not good at our jobs. Not <laughs> Turns out. We're, to, we're, we're learning. It's a <laughs> yeah. learning curve. In and we're head, on the bottom of it. <laughs> yeah. In my head, I was like, okay, you just click the button that says live stream. And then yeah. it starts live streaming. And that's Turns out no. <laughs> so, so we had to do more. That was a big uh, acts of doopsie <laughs> on my part. So thank you all for being so understanding while we work out all the kinks for yeah. our first live. Yeah. So, um, also I got extensions. <laughs> Sierra got hair <laughs> extensions. Can you tell? Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's fake as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's purchased. <laughs> and it is. Um, if you don't like it, I don't care. Don't tell me. <laughs> I don't want to hear about it. Keep that opinion to yourself. <laughs> I love it. Well, I'm thank obsessed you. with it. It makes me so, I feel so confident and mm -hmm. I've always wanted long hair. We said this to the exclusive people, but I, I was keeping it a secret from you guys. Yeah. So I've just always um, wanted long hair. I could never grow my hair past like this point. Yep. It was like the longest it would go would be when you guys saw me in the beginning of the podcast. Yeah. That was as long as my hair would grow. And yep. it would always get like gross. Like I couldn't curl it and make it look nice. Like if you look back at some of them, it does not look great. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I, I wanted to try it out and I got him and I love it. Yeah. And I'm so happy. I was a, I was a little nervous. I'll be honest. I was too. I've never seen you with long hair. Yeah. And I was like, is it going to be well done? Yeah. Is it going to like look like a mullet? <laughs> well, I just didn't know how it was going to look on you. No, because I know. you look so good with short hair. Yeah. That I didn't, I've never seen you with long hair. Mm -hmm. So when I saw you, I was like, I freaked out. I and like, you came over and I'm like, come to my bedroom. Let me dress you. <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing all of Jerry's She's clothes. like my doll right now. I'm really excited about it. So yeah. you're so cute. Thanks. Thanks. And she's more face on now. I am. For those I want to be watching on YouTube. I'm not hiding myself anymore. Yeah. Here we go. Confident CC. Yeah. Friggin' 2022. I'm like, what year? Are we <laughs> I know. It feels weird saying 2022. 2022? Um, well, so me and Corey set a date to get married. Yeah, I know it. So, I was like, I knew that we had talked about a date and then yeah. you made a post on Facebook and you're like, we set a date. And I'm like, oh, fucking OK. Well, well that's there it because is. the only thing I was waiting on is the DJ because yep. I was like, is he going to be available? And he called yeah. me. He was like, I am. I booked you. And I was like, tight. Done. <laughs> that is the day we're getting married. I don't care about venue. I don't care. I wanted this DJ because he did. He DJed at Jerry's wedding and mm -hmm. it was the best most fun party yeah. plus he got all the songs that you know how you know my vibe oh yeah and he is so it's gonna be quite the party i'm yep. very excited about it yeah i don't want to plan it i am panicking because <laughs> everybody's like as soon as i had like my small on the phone meeting with him he's like what's the venue what's this what's this what's this and i was like sir sir you were <laughs> my number one priority settle I down just set the date like <laughs> Calm down. Honestly, I never thought this was going to happen. Like, I yeah. knew that we would get engaged, but, like, the marriage part, I just never yeah. thought was going to happen. Yeah, because you were not, like, ever a wedding-focused nope. person. Nope. So, like, it is strange. I wanted to get engaged, but yeah. I really didn't care for the wedding. <laughs> I yeah. just wanted the ring. <laughs> That's so funny to think about. It's like the goal was engagement. It was, it was never It was marriage. never a wedding. <laughs> no. I never thought I'd make it to a wedding. Yeah. But I thought at least one or two people would propose <laughs> <laughs> and I was right. This yeah. is the first one with the ring, though, so it counts. <laughs> oh, well, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, I made chicken pot pie yesterday. I fucking love you chicken do? pot pie. I yeah. have leftovers if you want some. 
and I do. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you why my aunt used to make it all the time. So it's yeah. like a comfort meal that reminds Aww. me of her. Mm-hmm. I was almost so insensitive. <laughs> <laughs> it was almost like the dead one. Yes, <laughs> it was the dead one. Like how I'm yes. like, I was almost insensitive. And now and I'm going to be. Gonna be. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm sorry. She would laugh if she was here. <laughs> I know it. She uh, was funny as fuck. <laughs> um, so anyway, my <laughs> chicken pot pie. Um, Forest, I love the crust. Oh, of the chicken pot best pie. part, the the absolute best part. Yeah, Forest is like a um garbage can. Like he just <laughs> eats everything. That's how Noah was. God, he reminds me so Bottomless much of Noah. Pit. Yeah, Ollie's very very picky. Yeah, but when we put the chicken pot pie on his plate, Forest took a bite of the pie crust and was like not impressed and i was like excuse me what the fuck (laughs) our baby's broken (laughs) he doesn't like the best part okay jane goes oh you're not a big crust guy and ollie goes he's a big barbecue sauce guy (laughs) (laughs) so i was like "Hmm." i love that for him okay so i got him some barbecue sauce and sure as shit that boy dipped his (laughs) his chicken pot pie and barbecue sauce and ate it I love Forrest. <laughs> He's so fucking weird. I love him so much. See, that reminds me of Noah. They would tell me all the time that Noah was like, he'll eat anything. And I was like, no, literally. Mm-hmm. And one time my uh he was my aunt was like the alive one. <laughs> yeah. It helps <laughs> when you separate them that way. Yeah. <laughs> was babysitting him. <laughs> and he she said she was gardening and she like pulled a full on like green onion out and he just grabbed it and freaking took a bite and was just <laughs> eating an onion out of the garden <laughs> like it was an apple. <laughs> yeah. Or oh, fucking weird. Oh, such a weird. I was like, yeah, that's my son. That sounds just like him. Ollie this morning, now that we're just like talking about kids, kids sure. stuff, um, I saw on TikTok, no, Instagram, someone was making uh, cinnamon roll French toast and I was like, I oh, could do that. Yeah. So I made it and I was like, Ollie, do you want to try this? And he said, yeah. And I Till it. put some on his plate because he's like I said, he's really picky. Mm-hmm. And he took a bite and I was like getting the rest of it ready. And he goes, they're good, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Thanks, baby. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Yeah. He calls me baby. I all love the that. Time. I it's love so cute. That. And Shane's like a little weirded out by it. He's <laughs> like, that is your mom. <laughs> and I because he'll call Shane baby too because that's like Shane and I will call each other that he's like and I'm Shane's baby like, too I'm dad <laughs> he's like no you're baby <laughs> you're we're all baby here. <laughs> so. I love that it's pretty cute that is really pretty cute. freaking cute my other kid doesn't do anything fun yet <laughs> oh yeah she's basically a potato <laughs> she's la- she laughed the other day oh my g- she laughed so hard she snorted and I snort when I laugh and I always thought it was like Here's the thing I love about children. Mm. When they do things that you've always been subconscious about or when they have features that you've always been subconscious about and you're like, that is so freaking cute. Yes. On them. And you're then like you're learning like, to love yourself yes, through loving through my them. Kid. Because she snorted when she laughed and I almost, well, I did cry. Yeah. But I was like, that was the most, the most adorable thing I've ever seen in my life. And I was like, is that what people think when they hear me snort laugh? Probably not because I'm not as cute as her. But, <laughs> but I bet it's yeah. someone like this. Yeah, I hope so. It did sound like there was just something terrible like, that happened upstairs. Hello? I don't know if you guys heard that, but <laughs> it sounded like someone Her f- ceiling was caving yeah, in. Jumped off of a very high place and then You know that's my fear is the floor falling oh down. Oh my god, my phone just vibrated <gasps> in my crotch and that was delightful. Thank you, whoever was in the Discord that just sent a message. <laughs> wow, oh, <and> sir. <laughs> mommy appreciate. Good evening. My goodness. Okay, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, baby. <laughs> that was good, baby. Um, so, did you watch Too Hot to Handle? I did, and we have very season. different opinions on it. You liked it? Yeah. I absolutely hated it. It was a good time for me. I hated it. You did? Yes. Why? I liked Harry and Bo. I, I really loved, loved them. Harry and Bo. I love them. Mm-hmm. But I heard not good things about them afterwards. <gasps> I heard that they got arrested afterwards because they were like acting up on a plane and like doing really provocative 
raunchy shit on the plane home and they told him not to and then they were like fuck you do you know who we are kind of people and i was like oh that makes me like you a little less i don't know if that's true i hope they're not fuck you do you know who i am people but if they are mile high club people (laughs) cheers hey they weren't allowed to have sex that whole time (laughs) yeah um so i uh, my thoughts with it it just felt really 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 Scripted. scripted this time and it felt like they focused so much on like the bump bump moments yeah. of like the Lana parts. Yep. And those were never really the parts that I liked. Like it was yeah. good for like a second, but they really drew those parts yeah. out. And I hated that because it, I in the show, I really liked like the moments where they were all like together and joking around and like or showing the couple. I, I do have like 33 memes that of the like TikTok things that yeah. people put. I have to show you. Remind me before we leave. Okay. I was laughing so I hard I was crying. I know okay. I will too. <laughs> I'll send it to you okay. later. But it was really funny because it was basically like Holly me searching for a moment where Holly and Nathan seemed genuine. <laughs> was just, like, it was so funny because like they were all of a sudden like, I love you. Yeah. And I'm like, what? But you know that like they curate the episodes yes. to fit a narrative. Mm-hmm. So like part of me wonders, did they develop this intimate relationship that's that they I, just you That's didn't what see? I'm mad about because that's some that's the shit I want to see. Yeah. Yeah. And like that's the stuff that they didn't put in for some reason. Yeah. And I really wanted I feel like Holly and Nathan were the main focus and I didn't want them to be. I wanted Harry and Bo to be the main focus because yeah. their love story was beautiful. They were like the underdogs. They were, and it was so good. Yeah. And I really liked the girl that came in, and she was with Obi. God, what is her name? Good question. Mm. Good question. See, and the I'm one mad. who took four hours to <laughs> get ready for bed. I, I love, love that. Her. She's like, I will not rush my self care. Fuck all of you. No, she's like, I don't care. This is my time for me. <laughs> yeah, and I'm whatever. But I liked her and Obi, and I wanted to see more of them. And I feel like we yeah. didn't see any of them. I feel bad because. Obi to me. Uh, okay, so Obi, I felt like he. Fuck, how do I say this? It was almost like he had Freaky Friday, like that he was a <laughs> child in an adult's body. <laughs> Why? You know what I mean? Because, because he like. The way that he spoke was just so yeah, like childlike almost. Yeah, like okay. young. <laughs> and so it was like, it well, was they might like, have been young. Some of them were like, "I'm 20," and I, every time they yeah. say that, I'm like, "You're fucking 20." Yes. Weird. Yeah, but yeah, every time Obi talked, he was just like so fucking pumped about everything. I'm like, "You're 14. Mm-hmm. You seem like you're 14 years old, but you like body switched with <laughs> an adult." And the other thing, I I, I love. Men showing emotion. Mm-hmm. I love it. You guys know. Uh, it's a lot of people said their favorite quote, quote is what I say that I get off watching my cry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's true. <laughs> Nothing gets me more excited. <laughs> but I feel like it was so forced and fake. We never saw people cry like that when people left the retreat. I want to be like, you know, you knew these people for like five days. Like, I'm trying relax. To think who- they bawled every time anyone left. Like hardcore, it were like, <laughs> oh yeah. Anytime anyone left, I feel like the only time that was probably like genuine is when Patrick left. Yeah, people like Patrick. Except- Patrick. <laughs> Patrick. Was- Patrick is the main source of most of these memes. <laughs> Patrick was something else. He was a character at first. I was like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> and then when he left, I was like, God damn it! I yeah, love Patrick. I, like- I honestly liked him. I really liked when he was talking to Harry, and he was like, "Just be a human, dude. Yeah, tell her you have emotions. Like you're a human being." Yeah. And I was like, but then he was like, ah. I was like <laughs> "Stop laughing with your tongue out of your mouth." I swear to God, <laughs> please. Says the person who imitates Cardi B <laughs> all the time. <laughs> well, she's doing it. She's not like. Ah. <laughs> ah. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> it was too yeah. much. Are you okay, Mosby? He is like <laughs> falling asleep in the weirdest position, and I'm pretty sure he has barbecue sauce on him. <laughs> Do you see it? No. He's getting so much food on him because Forrest, Forrest really likes sauces. Mm. Like <laughs> he dipped his his Alfredo <laughs> in ranch <laughs> today. Why? <laughs> but he sticks his whole fucking fist <laughs> into like. A, 
the bowl of ranch and then he like pulls it out but it's one noodle he just has one noodle in his hand but fists the ranch and i'm like could you maybe not that's fucking foul honestly there are parts of <laughs> like raising a child that i'm not looking forward to and watching them eat is yeah. one of them that's but a huge you trigger have a girl so maybe i oh, god i hope she's neater i really <laughs> do yeah oh my god because that makes me throw up <laughs> when i watch babies oh, yeah. eat i'm like I'm going to fucking be sick. <laughs> Shit, that was Shane the I entire can't. dinner. I was like, just look at me. And he's like, I got to <laughs> I gotta turn around. <laughs> he's dipping his fucking pot pie in barbecue. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He had, we got Domino's the other day. Fucking love Domino's cheesy bread. Uh, and I get like six of the things of marinara. Yeah. Because I'm just a f- quadruple dipper. <laughs> and... <laughs> Forrest took the entire, because he has to have one. If you're dipping, he also needs to dip in whatever you're dipping. Doesn't matter what he's eating. It <laughs> it goes in that. And he like, he'll eat it? Yes. He picked up the entire thing of marinara sauce and drank it. No! <laughs> I wish Forrest if I quit. We don't have our phones at the dinner table, but if I had my phone at the table, I would have taken a photo of this kid with the <laughs> head tilted back marinara <laughs> cup in his mouth. He is something. Thing. Do you just get him completely naked when he eats? Because how do you? I just feel sometimes. like he would be so messy. Sometimes, yeah. That's the oh, other yeah. thing. Well, I'm like, you part can't me, have. Part of me thinks he's doing it intentionally because if he, it's bad enough, I'm like, all right, bath time, and then they he just likes run bath straight time. to the bath. Yeah. Well, we have LED lights now. Mm, Shane so it's is a party. Also a child. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So he, on Amazon, bought these LED like lights like pool lights yeah. but he puts them in the bath for the kids amazing actually that sounds so fun i want those for mine <laughs> it is i'll give you the link okay but i i took them the one time and i went and i was flailing them around <laughs> and so now ollie gets in there and he goes ums, ums, ums. <laughs> so my kids like, rave when they have a bath one time my, one of my cousins when Noah was drinking was like chug 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 and then he wouldn't drink his bottle until I went chug 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 <laughs> for the longest time he'd be like mommy do chug do chug and then he started I would have to be like chug chug, chug. <laughs> go baby go that's mommy's little crap boy <laughs> yeah I also let him play kings with us when he was like seven oh we, we did play kings with him yeah we did it really I I was not like he really liked making rules he loves making rules he would make really good rules mm-hmm. too at any time that he didn't drink alcohol i think no. that's important to say <laughs> no i gave him like a sprite but it was yeah. pop so he was like <laughs> so yeah. excited to drink it um i did i don't think i drank alcohol either me no, and him I don't know did if any of us did no i think that we were all just playing. he just wanted to play a card game that yeah. the adults play because yeah. he's seen us all play cards and i was like yeah we'll do this one and yeah. he really liked he's Someone that like loves rules. <laughs> yeah, he does. And so the fact that he, he could memorize them, rule. he was like, so anytime anybody forgot anything, he yep. was like, hey, you forgot whatever. Little you man. Put, he loved the little He man. loved little man. <laughs> oh, yeah. that was fun. Um, I also have something to share. If those of you who either were in the Discord or follow me on Instagram, I had an allergic reaction to retinol. Yeah. Then I had um, a hive attack. I might I talk to my dad at you a little bit because Why? me and you discussed you possibly being allergic to retinol and then you fucking used it like that. Well, <laughs> that was me trying to figure out for sure if it was what I was allergic you to. You posted, you were like, I had an allergic reaction. I was like, bitch, we just talked about it. I know, I know. I just had to be sure. And Sorry, now I know on. for sure. Yes. But also, like, I was looking really young. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, fuck, I. I'm a, one of my friends texted me and was like, you're allergic to being young. And I was like, that's so mean. <laughs> but that it's so true. mean. Yeah. Um, but I talked with my doctor because then I was waking up covered in hives, like mm-hmm. my arms, my neck, my face. It was beet red. It was so fucking itchy. Um, turns out now that my Zoloft has taken care of my anxiety attacks, my body is forcing my uh, anxiousness out in other ways. And really? hives seems to be the way. Um, so. Wow. I watched a uh, ASMR YouTube video last night <laughs> where someone was um, snipping my my negativity, <laughs> snipping it. Yeah, they pulled. They go pull and then <gasps> and they cut it. And I was like, "Fuck, thank you for that." <laughs> there it goes. There it goes. <laughs> yeah, and then put it in a ball, and they're like, 
and they throw <gasps> it and I'm like, thank you. Fucking thank you. That was the really same weighing on me. Person that takes well, your makeup off? That person, but then I also <laughs> If you guys don't have the exclusive, I talked about how I'm really, really deep in the ASMR community right now, <laughs> yeah. and I really love personal attention. But <laughs> um, no, this one was a different one. Okay. I'll have to send it to you. I think it was like Reiki she was doing, and Ooh, it was like energy work that I like she was that. doing. Yeah. Honestly, honestly, I felt different when I woke up. I had less hives. <laughs> oh, good. My hives are going away. I covered my face, but it like dried my face out mm-hmm. so much from having the hives. Yeah. I had aquaphor on my face. I was gonna say, did you put today. a moisturizer on? Because you have to. You what well, you I'm probably so scared did that my face is pissed at me. I well, what you probably did was damage your moisture barrier. Yeah, that's what I did when I had all that those insane breakouts because I was putting too many active like acids on my face at one time, and so Great. I super damaged my moisture barrier. You just need like a really good moisturizer and to moisturize every single day. Yeah. Well, I put aquaphor on my face twice, and it, the first time it did it, it was like immediately yes. go on. and the second time it stayed a little bit longer but yeah. I think I'll go to bed with it on yeah so hopefully Shane doesn't want to have sex because I'm going to be sticky <laughs> <laughs> or maybe that'll help I don't know <laughs> maybe you'll like it better yeah. amazing <laughs> every time I do that I'm like don't do it here so today we're going to talk about reincarnation but like not we're doing a true crime, okay, but we're doing it our way because, yeah. Um, again, I told you how I feel about true crime recently. I'm having a little bit of, but this is such a good, we're going to spend very little time on the actual, and it wasn't, I guess it was a crime, but we're going to spend very little time on that and yeah. more so on what came after. Yeah. So. Yeah. And like, disclaimer, we are not experts nope. in theology. And so when we speak about reincarnation, we're speaking about it from like a hypothetical, mm-hmm. like th- there's some coincidences yeah. here. Things I've heard along yeah. life's journey. <laughs> like Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um please feel free to correct us. Yeah. Um if there's something that like isn't correct or that uh was not uh that yeah, that wasn't correct. I yeah, guess, in the research or whatever, but um, we're not doing it intentionally. If we... Yeah, and I don't, um, I don't want it to sound I because I know reincarnation is a part of someone's religion, and yeah. we would never want to be disrespectful no. um, to someone's religion. But we heard about this story, yeah. and it seemed like an example of like a possibility of reincarnation. So yeah. we thought it would be interesting to discuss. Yeah, because yeah. it you guys have been wanting um tangents and true crime and like we said we had been battling with it and this kind of felt like a fun way to Yeah, like a um a little un- like kind of like a unsolved mystery but not an unsolved yeah, mystery. Yeah, yeah. Like just a, like a what could it be kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. It is kind of a mystery. And what's that book? The Imponderables? Yeah. yeah something Life's like that. Imponderables. Life's Imponderables. So, so how do you feel about reincarnation? How do I feel about yeah. it? I, okay, I think it's beautiful Yeah. for people that I want to come back mm-hmm. to think that they have an opportunity to do so in some way and like yeah. that I would potentially be able to interact with someone that I love in some capacity. I would never fucking want to come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I wonder, I've heard, again, this is something that I've heard along the way, not read anything, not, yeah. so I could be completely wrong, but I have heard in certain, like, theories of reincarnation is, like, um, peop- not everybody gets reincarnated. It's kind yeah. of like a, if you, have almost like something. with, like, a, yeah, if you missed out, if your life got cut too short, yeah. if there's still a lesson that needs to be learned. Yeah. Like, I know that there's, like, a religion where you can reach nirvana, but if you yep. don't, if you haven't gotten there yet, like you just, it's like a do-over kind of yeah. a situation. So I, I, for me, it's a little bit comforting because it's like, if I don't get it right in this one, maybe I'll get it right yeah. in the next one. I think I'm just so tired. I don't want to do done. it again. <laughs> I don't I'm want, done. I'm so done. And the thing that I've noticed, or I, I remember with Noah's dad once, we watched a show and it was like about children mm-hmm. being reincarnated and like these stories. And it was really interesting to yeah. see because like these young kids like there was one where someone remembered 9-11 and like there was one where like um a child remembered being in like nazi germany mm-hmm. and they they were listening and could understand german but it was like yes. an american child mm-hmm. so um i have heard 
for a lot of people or like it, it, it happens to children yep. and then they kind of grow out of it because it would make sense that like it's so new that like they're in a new yeah. body so they would remember their old life kind yep. of and then as they grow older it kind of fades out yeah so um, we're gonna talk about the pollock sisters did i ever tell you do you remember our friend emily yes okay <laughs> I was like, so I, think. I taught with her uh-huh. and she uh at one point said that she thinks that i'm on like my seventh life and she's like on her first oh, yeah. because she felt like I was, I don't know, Emily, if you listen, I don't know if you listen, but if you do, um, why did you think that? I think <laughs> she thought it was because of like, how was it? Because I was wise. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't want to like assume a compliment for myself. Yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, she was like, I feel like I'm on my first life and you're on your seventh. And then there was a book she was reading that kind of like supported that theory. Yeah. But that's just what it reminded me of when oh you were God. talking about that. Yeah. Well, they, okay, okay, okay. So this one's crazy. So the Pollock sisters. So we found this from a TikTok yep. video. Mm-hmm. Um, she pronounced it Pollock. Uh-huh. And then I read her get annihilated in the comments oh. by people who are from, I believe it's in England. Mm-hmm. So people who were from England were like, it's pronounced Pollock. And so yeah. if I'm incorrect, I apologize, but I'm just trying not to make the same mistakes <laughs> yeah. and get yelled at. She also said Hexham, which I absolutely would have also said, and it's Hexham oh, or Hexham, yeah. Hexham, and she said Hexham, which is how it's spelled, and I was like, damn, girl, that's what I would have done to <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you did it first. Good looking out. <laughs> yes. So, okay, so let's start. At Should the... we shout out that creator? Yeah, that go ahead. It from? So her TikTok is at Emmy Nix. It's E-M-M-I-N-I-X-X. Yeah. Okay. So that's who we heard about this from. Yes. So, okay, let's start at the beginning. So, in 1940s England, Uh two people, um, their names are Florence and John, get married. Florence and John Pollock. Pollock. Uh Uh-huh. They have two children, I believe. Might be four. (laughs) (laughs) I think they have two boys first. They have two boys, and then they have a girl. So, in... 1957. Nope, I lied to you. I'm sorry. In 1948, mm-hmm. they have a daughter named Joanna. Okay. Joanna, Joanna. I think it's Joanna. Joanna. And then later, they have, um, I believe it's in 1951, they have Jacqueline, her sister. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they ha- end up having two more boys. They have four boys in all, two little girls. Um, and they own like a delivery food service business thing. So like they're not really, they're, they're traveling a lot and trying yep. to do this business thing. So the kids are with their grandparents a lot and kind of being raised that mm-hmm. way. Um, so one morning on May 5th in 1957, Jacqueline is six years old. Um, Joanna is 11 and they are walking to church. Um, I believe they're with their parents at this point. So they're in Hexham, England, and they're with their friend, Anthony, who is nine years old. Okay. So little boy, Anthony, too. And they're walking way ahead, um, trying to get to church. And at that moment, a car is driving erratically, speeding. And um, I believe they said the driver was under the uh, the influence. It was a woman. Mm -hmm. She was under the influence of barbiturates and painkillers. What's a um, barbiturate? Uh, uh, phenobarbital, I think, was what it was called. I don't. Okay. What is a barbiturate? Should we look? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> now I want to know. Phenobarbital, I believe, was what exactly it was. Hey Siri, what's a barbiturate? It's a sedative. So it's like a sleep inducing. It. Goodness. So she had an insane amount in her system and what people okay. think is that she was trying to kill herself so oh. at this point she had gotten a divorce and i believe her children were taken away from her mm-hmm. or she was in the process of losing her own children it's very sad yeah so whether there's speculation that she did it on purpose or that it was an accident but yeah. either way as she's driving erratically she jumps onto the sidewalk where these three children are. There's speculation that she intentionally went onto the sidewalk after yes. them because she is in a drug. She's like on a drug. There was yeah. in people a state. believe that she was either like in a mental um, crisis. 
Yes. And then with these that she was Psychosis. kind of like saying, if I can't have my children. No one can. Yeah. Mm. So it was kind of like, a, but again, that's speculation. She did yes, go to yes. trial for it and, and she was found guilty, but she was sent to a, a mental health or a psych, psychiatric yeah. hospital for it. But so she hits these three children. Joanna and Jack, Jacqueline die immediately on the scene. Anthony's taken to the hospital, but he passes away as well. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that they lost three. I yeah. thought it was just the two. He died on the way to the hospital. Oh, my gosh. So, um, obviously, at this point, the parents are devastated. Yeah. Understandably so. Okay, and let's talk a little bit about the parents. So, Florence married John. She was not always Catholic, but John was Catholic. So, she converted to Catholicism for him. And when she did that, she really became, like, very interested in Catholicism. And so... I feel like that happens. I feel like whenever you like convert to it as opposed to being raised as it, you're yeah. very much more like in. Well, you feel like you want to learn as much as you possibly can and be as invested yeah. in uh, immersing yourself in it as possible. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel like that happens a lot for people who are converting. Mm-hmm. And the difference is so John grew up Catholic. Yeah. But. When he was younger, he was very interested in mm-hmm. reincarnation. He read books about it, like around the age of eight and nine. And uh, he, he was very like wanted to learn as much as he could. Yeah. It goes against Catholicism, though. So yeah. when he brought this up after the girls passed away, he brought it up to Florence. And mm-hmm. he would talk about it a lot. He said that he would pray to God um, in hopes that his children would get reincarnated and come back to him. And That's so fucking sad. Very. But Florence was like, no, like they almost got divorced because of it. Because really? She was so against it because she was so like, that goes against like the Every, Catholic yeah. way. Mm-hmm. Like that's not going to happen. Um, and she was grieving in her own way. And I think at that point she was just like, stop talking about it. Yeah. Plus he also went through a thing where he was blaming himself as like, did I do this? Is God punishing me yeah. for what Ugh. I learned, yeah, like when I was younger, for even questioning it, which is fucking terrible. It's so, it's so frustrating because like that that's on religious trauma. Yes, like whether you know it or not, and I know that there's been some talk about like being frustrated with how different like Christianity is portrayed in some of our episodes, mm-hmm. but like I am, I mean, we, but like me specifically, I've been going through a real journey with my faith. And like the more that I learn about other people and their experiences in other cultures, the more I recognize um, how problematic some of the things are with specifically Christian faiths Mm -hmm. or Catholicism, like the way that I was raised. And I, but Whenever something good happens for us, yeah, like for the podcast, for my family in general, um, I feel like if I don't thank God, yeah, if I don't um, pray, if I don't, that it's going to get taken away. Yes, yes, yeah. that it's either going to be taken away or I'm going to be punished, and I have to actively tell myself that's not how that works. That that's not true. No, and, and if it is, uh, if you do believe in a God that does things like that why because yeah. anybody who's like a, at all like like an omni being yeah. who loves you that much would not do things like that especially would not take your children away from you as punishment of yeah. just seeking out information yeah and i know that like even in the in the um the christian church that i was in it was they said like he doesn't punish you like yeah. it's not a punishment it just is what it is like and i I went out and told people that yeah. I was like advocating, but now like, uh, but at my core, I still felt like I was going to be punished. Yeah. I still felt afraid for things. And and we do want to talk about religious trauma at some point. So I don't want to totally derail the conversation, but I get where his struggle yes. is. He's like, he's grieving his children. He's wanting to have them back, but he's also trying to find a reason. Yeah. And so like, is it me? Yeah. yeah. It's terrible. So sad. So during this time, they're they're like talks of divorce happen, Mm -hmm. but then they find out that they're going to have another baby. Mm -hmm. So the next year, um, Florence finds out that she is pregnant again. So as soon as she finds out, John is like, 
these are our daughters coming back to us. It is our two little girls. It's twins, whatever. They go to the doctor. The doctor is like, there is one baby. Mm -hmm. There's one heartbeat. Up until she has the baby. What? They're like, the the doctor is like, there is one baby. And constantly John is like, no, it's going to be twin girls. And when she has the baby, it is two babies. It's twin girls. Yes. That doctor needs fired. Yeah. Well, it was also the 50s. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Never mind. You're hired again. Yeah. So they give birth to twin girls, Jennifer and Jillian, on October 4th, really 1958. like the J names. Yes. Well, except for Jillian is spelled with a G, so that's upsetting oh, to me. Gillian. That's what I'm like, is it Gillian or is it Jillian? No. I think it's Jillian. There, I had a student who was named Jillian, and they called her Jilly, and I thought that was so fucking cute. <gasps> that is really cute. Mm-hmm. Um, Okay, so there's like speculation too because so when they were born, I have to make sure I got the right one. Jennifer Mm -hmm. was born with birthmarks Jillian didn't have. And there's been a big thing that people think that identical twins, because they were identical, that identical twins have the same birthmarks because they have the same DNA. It's not true. Um, Birthmarks, don't they happen because of birth? No, I don't think so. How's a birthmark happen? Good question. But apparently with reincarnation and stuff, that's like a thing that well, they I've believe that. that birthmarks, something happened, it's either how you died yeah. or ooh, tell us if you have interesting birthmarks. And if you think I have one on my side and I swear mm-hmm. to God, it looks like a sword like like that. I was I sword have one fighting on my freaking calf. I feel like such a bitch. Yeah. Like how did you die? <laughs> yeah. And I think or I it could be something. So here's the thing. Jennifer had a birthmark. That was in the exact same place as, I believe it was Joanna. Nope, Jacqueline. So she had the exact same birthmark that Jacqueline had. Exact same spot. She also had a birthmark on her forehead that was the same shape and everything as a scar that um, Jacqueline had. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get names right because I remember in the last, in that Ruben one that we did, I kept accidentally Mm -hmm. calling him his son's name because I'm... Yeah, ADHD and I mess up things like names a lot. So yeah. apologies if I, I want to make sure I'm getting all these J names <laughs> correct. Yeah, but okay. So Jacqueline fell on a bucket when mm-hmm. she was like three and got a really big scar on her forehead. And then when Jennifer was born, she had the, a birthmark in the Weird. exact spot as the scar. Then, so they moved when the twins were like three months old, I believe. Mm-hmm. And so they really don't have any recollection of Hexum. Yeah. But then they go back. They just like visit. And the girls are begging to go to this park. They know it by name. They like know where it is. They're talking about their favorite things to do at the park. And they've never been to this park. Yeah. But it's a park that the older girls used to love to go to. Weird. They also, at the time, I believe it was... Um, they were around three or four. Mm-hmm. So when the, the older girls died, um, Jacqueline and Joanna, when they died, Florence put all of their toys away. Obviously, she was very upset. She just boxed them all yeah. up and yep. put them away. When the girls got to four, they started asking for the toys. Now, nobody had told them that these toys even what? existed. What? And they're asking no. for the toys, these dolls by name. Nope. And then when they got the toys out for them, they started divvying them up correctly to who the toys belong to. Like, um, you know, who this they... doll goes to you. This yes. doggy's mine. Yes. <gasps> and then they were like, these, these were from Santa. Correctly. What? The ones that were given as Christmas presents. No fucking way. <laughs> yes. Truly? How? That, right. How? We'll get into that at the end. Where, but. Yes, especially because people are like, did the parents tell him? But Florence was so against this idea for the longest yeah. time. Like, these are the things that convinced her yeah. that this could be real. Well, and I don't feel like if the parents were doing it, it's in the 50s. Yeah. So it's not like they're going to get social media famous. It's not like they're going to get... What would they be doing it for? Yeah, yeah. I don't understand what the gain would mm-hmm. be. Mm-hmm. Uh, because that would be a really painful thing to put yourself through. Yeah. And so, okay, there is another And a really sick thing to put yourself through of, like, you're your sisters now. Yes. Well, and a lot of people who were close to them said that they did not talk about the older girls. Because, of course, you're not going to be like, your older sisters died. You know, you're not going to tell three and four-year-olds that. Um, 
the other thing is the twins had the same personalities. So like Jennifer and Jillian, like, okay. So Joanna, for example, who was four years older than Jacqueline. She was 11 when Jacqueline was six, Mm -hmm. right? Correct. Almost seven. She was very protective of her younger sister. She was almost like a mom figure. And um, then Jillian, who was only 10 minutes older than Jennifer, exhibited a more mature, motherly, maternal like mm-hmm. uh, personality and would look after her twin sister. 10 minutes is a long time. I, right? <laughs> like uh, to be in labor I after you aged. just had a baby. <laughs> oh my God. I would be like, no. Another one? The, you moms of multiples. How? Yeah. Yikes. My mother-in-law, how? <laughs> yeah. She had one and then added the other one, breach. Nope. It came out butt first. <laughs> nope. So Pass. scary. Ass. I said pass. Oh, so you said ass. <laughs> came out butt first and you're like, ass. ass. <laughs> um, And then Jillian was more social and gen- generous than Jennifer, which are qualities that Joanna had as well. Plus, like I, one of them, I have to see if I have this. Yeah. So they were built similarly as well. So, um, like Jacqueline, Jennifer had a stockier build and mm-hmm. Jillian was more slender like Joanna was. And people who knew the girls also said that they walked in similar ways as their Weird. deceased sisters. I was going to say the body types is not so much, but they're identical shocking. twins. Okay. Which is kind that- of. That is kind of shocking. Yeah. That they're identical twins and they have different. And everything is matching up to the specific older sister. You know, if it was yeah. like one or the other, but it's the fact that they're. This is exactly to this person. All of these are exactly to this person. This is weird, too. Um, apparently, when Jillian learned to write, she would learn to write very quickly and she didn't have a lot of teaching. Um, but Jennifer would hold her pencil in a fist just like Jacqueline used to. And she struggled for writing for many years. Because she was younger. What, right? Jacqueline? Yeah. I think yeah. I met Jennifer. I was like, ten, by 10 minutes. No, no, no. no. I <laughs> but mean, yes. but the older sisters, if they are matching up to them, yep. yeah, one yeah. would be more advanced than the other because she was older when she passed. Exactly. This one's, these are kind of fucked up, so I apologize. Oh. But, so. My short-term memory is absolute butt shit. Me too. My God, it's so sad. You guys, I'm sorry, I'm derailing this before a sad part, but um, in the Discord, or in the live that we just did with the Patreon. Mm-hmm. Everybody was like <laughs> quoting things from the episode that just came out today that I literally recorded last week. And I was like, what's that about? I don't <laughs> and they're like, what? You just said it. It was you that said it. They compared her to Dory and it was hysterical it was. to me. It's very true. It's actually kind of upsetting. <laughs> anyway. So super sad. Mm-hmm. Number one, the twins were terrified of cars. So um, when they were walking or running by like a vehicle, it, they would start panicking. They wouldn't cross the street by themselves, even like as small children. Mm. You know how children kind of you have to oh, teach yeah. them. Ollie car, was, street safety. doesn't give a shit. Yep. He's just like, go in. Bye. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's like they never had to learn that. Um, they would even they would like say that they were scared that the cars were going to hurt them mm. while they were. That's so sad. Yeah. Um, as. They grew older then. The fear of automobiles started to go away, but it was very big when they were younger. Well, I was going to say, it wouldn't make sense necessarily for the parents. What a fucking weird thing to instill. Even if they did say, your sister's passed away, your brother and your sister's passed away. I don't think they would tell them how. That's what I'm saying. Going into graphic detail like that to instill a fear. Like that to me. Now, I could understand if they were like, hey, we need to be be careful, careful, but... And, and understandably, I'm sure yeah. the parents would be afraid, but they even said like they did it without. Yeah. And then the other thing that was really upsetting is um, Florence said that she would walk in. She walked in a couple times and they were playing. And while they were playing, they were like saying details from the accident that happened. So um, she witnessed Jillian lying on the floor of their room with her head resting in Jennifer's lap and Jennifer was stroking her head in a calming gesture telling her there was blood dripping for her from her eyes because the car hit her. Oh, <gasps> ew, ew, again, ew, ew. Again, even if their parents said anything to them, they would I I highly doubt they would ever go into graphic detail like that. Yeah. <sighs> so, 
Then Dr. Ian Stevenson, who is a professor of psychiatry at the University of Virginia School of Medicine, he hears about these twins. He contacts the family. He is like super, super interested in anything reincarnation. I believe he's written several books, but he wrote one specifically for these twins. Uh I want to read it so bad. I didn't have time because we literally decided on this like (laughs) earlier this week. Yeah, (laughs) But um, he wrote a book called Children Who Remember Previous Lives, A Question of Reincarnation. I would love to read that. But he becomes like super interested in them and um, like follows them throughout. And he he's like convinced yeah. that what, what they're going through is real. As they grow up, though, they, at, like around five, these yeah. memories begin to fade a little bit. Um, they start separating themselves. However, in 1981, Jillian claims that she's got a ser- she's had a series of visions where she's playing in a sandbox in Wickham, England. and she can describe the town in vivid details, but she's never been there. And that was not her that was playing. That was a memory of one of the older sisters. So, okay, that happened in the 80s? Yeah. They were born in the 50s? 50s. So yes. she's 30 and is having this memory? Yes. Ew. Or in her 20s. Yeah. Yeah. So she's like, just like, she couldn't remember of anything of the accident. Um, she, They believe they probably yeah. repressed those, obviously. Oh, yeah. But- like they'll get little flashbacks of memories that did not happen to them. Ew, weird. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like, but it's, it's, I don't want to say ew and then it'd be like me being like gross to someone's uh, belief system. It's right. not that. It's just like, I couldn't imagine being in a body well, and, and having also, memories that weren't mine. Can you imagine like that? This would be a horror film yes you know what i mean you go in and two little girls are sitting there and they're talking about like a death that happened that didn't yeah. happen to them yeah it's just something that's unexplained and i don't think that we should beat ourselves up for being like shocked by it yeah. because it is a shocking thing like yeah. to think that that could actually happen however um there are certain theories of why it could be so they did have four brothers okay and so there is like um a theory that the brothers could have yeah, had implanted some a kind lot of, of that. impact on telling them about the toys, telling them about mm-hmm. the street and things like that. So the parents don't know. That could be it. There's also something that is a theory that's very interesting that I want to learn more about. And I just, I was reading a lot about it this week, like this case. And yeah. then today was when I read this theory and I'm mad that it happened today because I really wanted to get more yeah. into it. But there was something called maternal impression. I Oh my gosh. Okay, go ahead. That happens like so because she got pregnant so quickly after her daughter's passing and she's very Florence and she's very obviously still grieving the death of her children and thinking about those memories constantly and that anxiety that it could have in like planted those. Yes. Into her growing children. Well, Something I was thinking about Shane and I were talking about. um, (laughs) This is a little peek into my relationship (laughs) Um, at dinner yesterday. We were talking about um, when something stops being a natural resource. Mm -hmm. So he's like, or considered natural. So when we're talking about something, he's like, if it's made of things that are found in nature, when is it no longer considered natural? This was a conversation that we were having. Yeah, that's (laughs) a good question. We were in this like debate query. But then he was, he made the point of like, you know, there's the theory the energy can't be created or destroyed. Mm -hmm. And so that got me thinking, if energy can't be created or destroyed, I didn't, like, yes, I gave birth. Yeah. But, like, the energy that is within my children Mm -hmm. wasn't created. Right. It was just transferred. So, like, when I see Forrest doing certain things or when I see Ollie doing certain things, I'm like, the reason I feel like it's so reminiscent of myself, even if he's there, the things that I'm noticing are nothing that I've ever done. Yeah. Is it because my energy transferred? Yeah. Like, is it because I am now living in another body? Or mm-hmm. li- but like, I'm not necessarily me but either like, then. Yeah. Well, I did. Re- I remember in my child psychology class. Now, this was like a very small portion of a big chapter that we read. Yeah. So I don't like remember everything. But I do know that they were talking about like stress hormones, cortisol. Yeah. Is yeah. that what it's called? And uh, mothers who like 
Mm -hmm. experience a lot of that and it getting transferred and it can cause like certain reactions so let's say um you every time you hear like a slamming door or a loud sound you release that because of like you were in an abusive relationship and so loud noises like make you have that intense reaction when your baby comes out and they hear this or like a dog barking yep if you're afraid of dogs you hear a dog barking and you release those your infant child when it comes out could develop a fear a phobia of dogs because their body automatically releases that stress hormone when it hears the barking because your body did it when they were growing inside your body so so I, i definitely think a theory like that is plausible yeah um it, it, it's interesting for sure but i also really like the reincarnation theory yeah so that's well i feel like that would be a lot to imprint on a child that's very specific it, so specific the, the specific details of the accident the yeah. birthmarks like all yeah. of it together is so how you know yeah. what i mean like like one or two things you could potentially explain away but the combination of all, all of, of it them is like a bit of them having memories and being able to yeah. describe places they've never been before yeah. or going back and ble- being like let's go to this playground and remembering playing in the same ways with the same mm-hmm. toys knowing yep. them by name like well that's the thing too even if the brothers told them about these toys would they be able to identify them without have ever seeing them right before? right would they be able to tell them how exactly to play with them in the exact same way that the yeah. girls used to play because i guess they were really good friends the the older sisters Mm -hmm. and they would play together all the time and the parents would watch them then the younger sisters recreating the exact same like play scenarios yeah Yeah. no that's strange that is strange so that's all i could find for that it's super interesting but i would love to get that book that is like the next thing on my list to buy or if you guys know of any other stories that are like this yeah like that would be super super fun to yeah for us to also dive into not maybe not necessarily like on another episode but yeah but just something to lit yeah i'm gonna we shared this with you yeah you share Share something something with with us us. (laughs) and if you have interesting birthmark or like any kind of reincarnation stories of your own freaking let us know because that would be so cool yeah i I definitely think i remember noah told me before when he was younger he would talk about his sister who was in prison all the time what yes and he didn't know about your pri- sister was in prison. <laughs> <laughs> no that's what i always thought because i was like yes tay tay got arrested again <laughs> no but like she didn't get arrested that many times <laughs> it was only like twice <laughs> i love that you said that many times <laughs> relax it was only like two times <laughs> but he would talk about like his sister and that would, uh, you know i'm not gonna be Mm -hmm. like no you don't have a sister i mean me i was like tell me more about your sister what's she like and he was like yeah she's in she was in jail with the he kept saying she was behind bars and i was like bars like what he's like like jail he was like three when this happened so it was very like yeah what the fuck but the more i pressed him about it the more he would be like oh i don't want to tell you about it anymore yeah so he wouldn't talk about it all i know is that she was in jail i really wish i knew why Hmm. I was like, how did you die? <laughs> Tell me. Did she kill people? <laughs> did, she, did she kill you? <laughs> but wow, that's know. fascinating. Mm-hmm. Very. Mm. So, well, like, that's that's it. That's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everybody. That's the that on the Pollock sisters? Yeah. All of them? All of them. And being, them, being the other ones? Yeah. I guess. Either way, whether it's real or not, I hope it kind of gave that family a little bit of comfort. Yeah. Would it give you comfort or would you be like, I think it would give me comfort. I don't know. I think I would feel comforted to know that they were because part in of, some way okay. Part of me, though, like when and I'm getting a second chance, I guess. When we lost Jonah, mm-hmm. um, for those of you who are newish listeners and don't know, um, Shane and I had a late term miscarriage and, um, when we lost him in my head when i got pregnant with ollie it was like jonah coming back yeah and it wasn't until after i had ollie that i realized that that wasn't ollie like that they were yeah. different people yeah yeah, yeah. and so and you'd also kind of i guess don't want to put that on a kid like the expectations yeah. you have to be your 
Does yeah, he and, and sibling I mean, now? Technically, we had never parented Jonah, so it wasn't like there would have been anything to even compare. Right. But at the same time, it was, I don't know how I would feel looking at my children and feeling like it was them again. Right. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I already parented you once. Yeah. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you should be past this. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That was a joke. I'm, I'm just trying sorry. to make light of a situation. It's sad. It's yeah. sad. Well, it's, uh, as two mothers, it's a very hard thing yeah. to even try to Do think you want about. me to change the subject? Could you? Yeah, uh, for sure. Because I wanted to say this as well. We need a lighthearted I thing I saw at the end. another thing on TikTok. Okay. Someone made, I think it's called Redhead Revolution, mascara. What? And eyebrow <gasps> something. For redheads. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say like, oh, poor me, white lady. No, no, I'm not going to say that. But I will say, I know that I am able to find things that work for my skin tone more often than other people. Right. But when it comes to mascara or eyebrow products or things like that, it is kind of tough for me yeah because of my red hair yeah, (laughs) and because of like the tone of my eyebrows and stuff. And so like, a lot of times if I use black, it's just like super intense. Yes. Um, but they have like two different kinds of mascara and one is like auburn Ooh. and one is ginger. <gasps> and so it's like one is like my hair color and the other is like a little bit deeper. So I Gorgeous. could. I ordered some. Oh, I'm excited to see it on you. Me too. Because oh, like on wait. my no makeup makeup days. I feel like a naked mole rat. Mm-hmm. It's like an insecurity of mine because I you cannot see my eyelashes. You want to just blonde. have a little something, but it's yeah. like you don't want to put full on freaking yeah. black mascara on when you're yeah. just trying to be. Because I get it all over, all over my uh, lids. Yes. <laughs> yep. So if I don't have any mascara on and then, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have any eyeshadow on and then I put mascara on, it's just like black everywhere. <laughs> it's a yeah. mess. It's startling. Yeah. So I'm excited to try it. I can't wait to see it. I'm I had to pre-order excited. it. <gasps> I know. They sold out immediately. And it was just like one person on TikTok that made it or what? Well, I I don't know who made it. Oh. Redhead Revolution made it. But um, I just saw one TikTok about it. And I was like, purchase. And, I also, and done. I also purchased. They had a skin tint as well <gasps> that I purchased. Okay. And it was like your skin but better. Like you could still see your freckles through it. And I was like, I like my freckles. I like my freckles. Yeah. So maybe I should do that. Sure. You got to okay. pre-order it, I think. But okay. anyway. All right. Well, that's that on this, guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, if you liked it, let us know what your feedback is. Yes. And if you want to hang out with us, have an opportunity to help us select episodes, hang out with us in lives, hang out with us in the Discord. Yes. Um, we went off talking about birds the other day. Do you know they have ears? Very upset. Oh, my God. Don't Google it, but Google it because <laughs> ears. Holes in their head. <laughs> holes in their head. Absolutely terrifying. Um, We're going to play. Snake oil. Mm -hmm. And if you guys don't know what snake oil is, I'm going to tell you. I found out about this game because I was watching the Jenna and Julian podcast. And I thought it was so, so fucking funny. I miss Jenna. I know. So, basically what happens is one of us is going to pick one of these cards. There's green on one side, blue on the other. And they are... um, titles they're like jobs but yeah. like not all of them are jobs because like this one is couch potato yeah so it's just like an identity and then we each will get how many do we want Five? seven okay seven two three four five six seven okay i have seven. Oh, you pick your own <laughs> and then we have to create a product to fit the needs of the identity of the person Mm -hmm. okay and we have to try and sell it to them like it's going to be beneficial yeah yeah okay okay do you want to be the person or do you want to try and sell first i want to be the person okay (laughs) i knew you you weren't gonna want to sell first okay which one do i choose does it matter you pick whichever side you want pregnant woman (laughs) are you for real (laughs) oh my god okay 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 could not be any more perfect oh god okay you have to pick two, correct, and put them together? Yes. Okay. 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 All right. <laughs> so you're pregnant. Okay. Okay. And as a pregnant woman, mm-hmm. you it's important to continue to move your body. I was going to say 
continue to be pregnant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it is that also, is a goal. Yeah. No, it's I want to be mobile. Yeah. It's important to move your body. It's sure. important to get the blood pumping uh-huh. because you don't want to get clots. <laughs> <laughs> That's really a big thing. For sure. Yeah. But at the same time. I don't want to move my body. You don't because you're tired. I'm so tired. And also your body hurts because that big. weight distribution is like different mm-hmm. than it normally is. It's Bitches a lot of on pressure. My bladder. Yeah. yeah. So I present to you something that's going to allow your body to still keep pumping and feeling like it's active, but also resting. It's called the exercise bed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love so you're gonna get to lay in bed, yeah. but it's it's gonna vibrate. It's gonna give you the sensation of your body moving. Okay. But you don't you can lay down. You can be horizontal. Mm-hmm. And also the vibrating just feels kind of good. <laughs> I hear you. I also know as a pregnant woman. I want to feel good. <laughs> you do want to feel good. And it's hard to feel good sometimes when you lay it like that. I can't so, get to I can't reach all my pressure points. <laughs> you can't. And you know what? It doesn't feel good when other people try no. sometimes. Sometimes I don't want to be touched by yep. anything but my bed. Uh-huh. 100%. Yes. Your exercise bed. Would you like to purchase this? I do. I want that. Yes. Okay. Perfect. You I want have... it. Can I get it without being pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> you cannot. Oh. It is strictly for pregnant people. Rude. So we have to come and get it as soon as you have the baby. <laughs> <laughs> what if I have the baby in it? In it? Yeah. Well, that's going to cost you. It's like it just a... fucking flips it out. <laughs> it's like an Uber. <laughs> If you give birth in the couch, you owe you us have to money. Pay for it. <laughs> so you gotta pay for the cleaning. Gotta... <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's fair. Okay. But yeah, you can find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash ladies and tangents. Yeah. We thank you so much. We will see you next week. We love you. We're out. All right. Goodbye. <laughs>